Josh has a great idea back here of using this spurn co fitting. That gives you the ability to clean this thing out. If anything clogs in the system, you've got a way of getting back in there and taking the end off so that you can blow the line out. I thought that was a great thing. That's what I learned today from Josh. So that guy, that guy right behind me right there, he's acting all cool and calm and collective. <laughs> I don't think I'm it was- a, mentally ready. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Pretty think sure it was the was best idea going. to eat oh. before he goes and jumps into the 30 degree water. Makes me feel a little better. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to him throwing up all over the ice. Oh, you're so nervous. <laughs> it's so awesome. All right, let's do this. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> Good morning, Team Aquascape. We are on the start of day four. I got John Adams here with me. He's gonna walk us through what the game plan is today. It's D-Day. We're gonna crush this thing as a team. It's coming together really awesome. We're super excited to see how John's design and vision comes together today. So, John, take it away. D-Day, what does that mean? Is that done, done deal? Done day. <laughs> done day, all right, I'm excited about that. I am whipped, kids. It's been a long four days, long 3.1 days. Day four is gonna be awesome. Look at what we got going on, man. Everything's happened, it's all coming together. The entire team just like gelled yesterday afternoon and went ballistic and, it, and it's just, it's fantastic. I'm super excited, these guys are setting up lights. We got uh, secret stuff going on in the back corner that nobody's got to see yet. All the flagstone stuff's coming together, the fire pit's coming together. All the boulder work in here is coming together. We're getting ready to do some jets in the pond. I mean, just the final details, man. We're wrapping it up. And what else to say besides awesome. stay tuned. Awesome. A couple crushing. hours, it's gonna be done. Josh has done most all the work, but I'm gonna stand here and talk to the camera about it. So we do jets a lot in our ponds because that gives us the flexibility to bring water in from the biological filter to the mechanical filter close together. And we can leave a lot of dead space in the pond. So like the design of this water feature in particular, it's coming in and out right close to itself. Come on over here. 
comes in right here, goes out right here. So we're gonna have this curvature of flow right here. The whole back of the pond is gonna be stagnant. You're gonna have this bed space. To me, circulation is just as important as filtration. You don't want places where stuff collects. You don't want places where algae looks nasty. Thus, jets. Sometimes I will do rock formation and come over the liner. If, if I have an elevation change and I can make that work and it looks good, I prefer to go over versus going through. But in this case, that doesn't work. So then you gotta make a rock pile. So then you have this. We also, they've got great fittings in here where you've got the tees that have the one inch threads in them. That makes it really nice. These are a whole lot more flexible as far as getting what you want. So it gives you the ability to point the water exactly where you want it to go. You can create a flow pattern with them. You can avoid plants if you want to have a lily pocketer or an area where you don't want turbulence. I can adjust these guys so that I can have a still area for a lily back here and still have current pushing out so this stuff doesn't collect. I don't know what else I can say about the jets other than you know, I'm not sure it was all necessary to do for our one day pond, but it's going to look cool it's for a, a good few minutes before lesson. these guys rip it out. So <laughs> enjoy your day. guys it's oh look at there i got the horn going again <laughs> it is day four it's thursday it's the final push you can see everybody is staying pretty busy behind me busting butt yesterday was kind of a day where we just had to say hey let's get moving because we're not going to finish and it was amazing how when everybody gets a little fire lit under their butts how fast things get done so we stayed a little later last night really kind of finished up the pond finished up the waterfall finished a lot of grading and now we're doing edging which is what i really really wanted to show you you guys John and April John from modern design April from American waterscapes are fantastic edgers and to me edging on a pond makes or breaks a pond probably even more so than a waterfall Johnny I told everybody you were the one of the best edgers pond edgers in the entire world why do you lie to all your friends April I told everybody <laughs> that you were one of the best pond edgers in the entire world in fact you guys are so lucky because you have two of the best pond edgers in the entire world and to me like I I was telling everybody else before earlier edging makes or breaks at a project i thought it'd be an awesome opportunity to show everybody really some of your pointers tips tricks mistakes you've made in the past what to avoid and really how to make it look natural first and foremost do not cut the liner below the water level <laughs> this is a laser you want to make sure that you use this i'm going to give you the basics real quick put your liner this much above water level fold some over nice and clean behind there in case you screw up you've got something to work with so really quick these are professionals so what they're doing i would not recommend doing at home don't do your edging until the pond is filled all the way up to the very 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 top at that point then you can start cutting the liner these guys know how to use a transit they also know exactly what's going to happen over in here for those of you that are new wait till your pond is up and running before you start doing any of your edging you'll avoid so many mistakes because if you cut that liner too short it's kind of hard to stretch it every you guys have a liner stretcher what he said yeah <laughs> yes, very good advice. So good. what else I want to throw out there is don't do this. Yep. You know, that's what we call the liner wad effect. You want to avoid the wad because if you see this over on this side, see how you got that nice clean edge across the top right there? If you have a low edge somewhere, inevitably in your water feature over the course of your lifetime, you're going to get a low edge. If you don't have a nice clean way of finding it, you're going to dig for the rest of your life yep. looking for a low edge. Make it easy, make it clean, keep it below the top of whatever your substrate is, wood, rocks, whatever. Keep that fold down below the top so that you can mulch over it your ground cover can cover it up you don't want to see the rubber when you get done it's basically the short version yep. of that story watch how april gets over here and hooks the liner to the log and does her thing in order to make it stay so the soil doesn't wash in and so this is this is magic. this is a perfect example you've got all this liner here i think my pet peeve is when people come in that wad is really annoying or even worse they'll just leave this and now the easiest way to finish it off is just cover it with a pile of gravel which just looks ridiculous especially when you have this log right here if I saw a log like this in nature the log is washed up onto the shore side and then stopped the earth from eroding into the pond and so we want to bring soil right up next to this which then will allow us to bring plants that much closer so you can see over here April kind of folding this and I would call it more of an accordion fold and it can be kind of tricky but really important and this too you might also point out it's 
especially on a cedar log. It's very sharp. It's got a lot of points and yep. sharp edges. We've got an extra layer of underlayment inside here to protect the liner. Make sure that you don't let that go over top because this will wick the water up out of the pond and just create a moist area here. I mean, if you do it, do it on purpose. Don't do it by sure. accident. So protect your edge. Look at her fold the way she's got that queen. That's perfect. So you got a big ball of liner basically and you've folded it about five times. Now show them what happens, what can happen with this fold so, if it were to dip down. Yeah, if you're not careful, this fold gets down here and yep. then you've got a spout to pour your water right out the side. And you might think that you're really smart, like you might do this with your liner and you might cut it off on the top. Don't ever just cut it off flat on the yep. top because you're never going to hide that edge. The folded edge tucks down so much better and it stays down. I also notice that. you're keeping probably about eight inches of liner past your edge and that's really just because if over time something settles, you've got that extra liner, you can pull it up and fix a low edge pretty quick. The other thing I notice you're doing, and I'm always trying to encourage our guys, when doing edges, work as a team. Yep. If you can have somebody right behind you with soil or gravel or whatever you need, it's that much easier. Like I see you holding this patiently, waiting for John to come in and give you some soil. Hint, hint, <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> Incoming soil. Nice. This is one of the hardest things for people to learn, and it just takes time playing with the liner yeah, and moving you just it back have to and forth. It back and forth, and find where it wants to fold. You can't fold it where you want it to fold. Yep. You have to let it find its way a little bit. And I've had a bunch of people ask me, "Well, what if I wanted to put soil over here? Can I do that?" And so what I, I would yes. do is I would just take a little bit of this do here, and I just fill this up a little bit. We're just trying to keep that soil from finding its way into the pond, right? I'm not waterproofing or anything, so you just fill your- 101 uses for waterfall foam. Oh, I can use foam on so many things. Notice her fingers. Oh, I did good this time. I worked most of the time. What an awesome trick. Now that allows you, because everybody was probably wondering how are we gonna hide this little area of uh, liner right here, and instead of putting gravel on it, now you've sealed it, and we can actually push the soil right up over in the top and into this log. And a little bit of moss. Look at Johnny go. Where'd you find that stuff? This came from New Hampshire. Whoa. We had the sandbox, the specialties, <laughs> secret moss, secret cedar logs. So Dan Harp is coming next week and he shipped four boxes of Pacific Northwest moss just for his project. And it called earlier today to say, hey, can we pull it, lay it all out and water it for him? Perfect. Yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> now I just need to find, find. Dan's moss <laughs> and we will be sure to keep it watered for you, my friend. <laughs> He's already Ooh. nervous. <laughs> Should we let him off easy? No. no. So here's your options, buddy. Either you can go and get all the way under and dunk in the water over there, or you can stand beneath the waterfalls over here and get a shower. I'll just dunk. You'll do the dunk? Smart. Because okay. you'd fall over over there. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're so nervous. It's <laughs> so awesome. All right, let's do this. Good to hear we coming out. This is so funny. Look at just look at the expression on his face. Oh look at it. And the whole office is ready to see it. I love my I'm a man of my word. There you go. Just think like in 20 years you can tell your kids you did this. Come on, let's go over this way. Right now, the only person that got wet is the camera guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not only is he jumping in, but he's hiking. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, give him a countdown, let's go.
Was that the coldest you've ever Yo, been? Fuck. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the coldest I've ever been in my life. That took your breath away, didn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is a good sport. <laughs> well done, bro. That was funny. Ooh, you are red. Good job, bro. You are a good sport. You earned my respect. Now, now get on that with weights. <laughs> I love my job.